The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Almighty God, in the days of old you spoke to your people through the prophets, but now in these last days you speak to us by your Son. As we celebrate the gift that you give to us, let us be drawn toward him to find the fulfillment of your promise of salvation. We ask this in the name of the one who took on our nature for our sake, Jesus the Christ. Amen. On this Christmas Day, our lessons are going to be both from the Old Testament and the New Testament. We'll hear from the Old Testament first, some stories and readings that foreshadow what's going to be happening in the Christmas story from the New Testament. We begin this morning with God's word of promise to Zechariah and Elizabeth, but first turning to the book of Genesis, chapter 7 and 12. Yahweh said to Abraham, Go you forth from your land, from your kindred, from your father's house, to the land that I will let you see. I will make a great nation of you, and I will give you blessing, and will make your name great. Be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you. He who curses you, I will damn. Through you all the families of the soil bless themselves. So Abram went, as Yahweh had told him, and Lot went with him. After these things, the word of Yahweh came to Abraham in a vision. Do not be afraid, Abram. I am your shield. Your reward shall be very great. But Abraham said, My Lord, Yahweh, what will you give me? For I continue childless, and the heir of my house is Eliezer of Damascus. And Abram said, To me you have not given seed. So here, the son of my relative must be my heir. But the word of Yahweh came to Abraham. This man shall not be your heir. No one but your very own issue shall be your heir. God brought him outside and said, Look toward the heavens and count the stars if you are able to count them. Then he said to him, So shall your descendants be. And Abram believed Yahweh, and Yahweh reckoned it to him as righteousness. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now this is paired with the story of Zechariah and Elizabeth from the Gospel of Luke, the first chapter. In the days of King Herod of Judah, there was a priest named Zechariah, who belonged to the priestly order of Abijah. His wife was a descendant of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. Both of them were righteous before God, living blamelessly, according to all the commandments and the regulations of the Lord. But they had no children, because Elizabeth was barren, and both were getting on in years. And it came about that when he was serving as priest before God, and his section was on duty, Zechariah was chosen by lot, according to the custom of the priesthood, to enter the sanctuary of the Lord and offer incense. Now, at the hour of the incense offering, the whole assembly of the people was praying outside. Then appeared to him an angel of the Lord, standing at the right side of the altar of incense. When Zechariah saw him, he was terrified, and fear overwhelmed him. But the angel said to him, Do not be afraid, Zechariah, for your prayer has been heard. Your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son, and you will name him John. You will have joy and gladness, and many will rejoice at his birth, for he will be great in the sight of the Lord. He must never drink wine or strong drink. Even before his birth, he will be filled with the Holy Spirit. He will turn many of the people of Israel to their Lord, their God. With the spirit and power of Elijah, he will go before him to turn the hearts of fathers to their children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the righteous, to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. Zechariah said to the angel, How will I know this is so? For I am an old man, and my wife is getting on in years. The angel replied, I am Gabriel. I stand in the presence of God, and I have been sent to speak to you and to bring you this good news. But now, because you did not believe my word, which will be fulfilled in their time, you will become mute, unable to speak, 
until the critical time these things occur. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God's word is fulfilled in the birth of John. A reading from the Gospel of Luke, the first chapter. But the day for Elizabeth to give birth was fulfilled, and she bore a son. And her neighbors and relatives heard that the Lord had declared his mercy with her, and they joined her in rejoicing. It came about that on the eighth day, Elizabeth and Zechariah came to circumcise the child, and others were calling him in the name of his father, Zechariah. But his mother said, no, he's to be called John. They said to her, none of your relatives have this name. They began motioning to his father to find out what name he wanted to give him. He asked for a writing tablet and wrote, his name is John. All of them were amazed. And immediately John, Zechariah's mouth was opened and his tongue was loosed and he began to speak, praising God. And it came about that fear was over all their neighbors, and throughout the entire hill country of Judea, everyone was talking about these words. Everyone, having listened in their heart, kept, kept them, saying, What then will this child become? For indeed, the hand of the Lord was with him. The child grew and became strong in spirit, and he was in the wilderness until the day he was manifested to Israel. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
God's word of promise to King David. A reading from 2 Samuel chapter 7. Then King David went in and sat before the Lord and said, Who am I, O Lord God, and what is my house that you have brought me thus far? And yet this was a small thing in your eyes, O Lord God. You have spoken also of your servant's house for a great while to come. May this be instruction for the people, O Lord God. And what more can David say to you? For you know your servant, O Lord God. Because of your promise and according to your own heart, you have wrought all of this greatness, so that your servant may know it. Therefore, you are great, O Lord God, for there is no one like you, and there is no God besides you, according to all that we have heard with our ears. Who is like your people, like Israel? Is there another nation on earth whose God went to redeem it as as a people and to make a name for himself, doing great and awesome things for them by driving out before his people nations and their gods? And you established your people Israel for yourself to be your people forever, and you, O Lord, became their God. And now, O Lord God, as for the word that you have spoken concerning your servant And concerning his house, confirm it forever. Do as you have promised. Thus your name will be magnified forever in the saying, The Lord of the hosts is God over Israel. And the house of your servant will be established before you. For you, O Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, have made this revelation to your servant, saying, I will build you a house. Therefore, your servant has found courage to pray this prayer to you. And now, O Lord God, you are God, and your words are true, and you have promised this good thing to your servant. Now, therefore, may it please you to bless the house of your servant, so that it may continue forever before you. For you, O Lord God, have spoken, and with your blessing shall the house of your servant be blessed forever. Here ends the reading. And now we continue with the reading from the Gospel according to Luke, the second chapter. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quinerius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to the city of Judea to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and the family of David. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
God's word is fulfilled in the birth of Jesus. We begin with a reading from the prophet Micah, the fifth chapter. But you, O Bethlehem of Ephrath, who are one of the little clans of Judah, from you shall come forth for me one who is to rule Israel, whose origin is from old, from ancient days. Therefore, he shall give them up until the time when she who is in labor has brought forth. Then the rest of his kindred shall return to the people of Israel. And he shall stand and feed his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God. And they shall live secure. For now he shall be great to the ends of the earth, and he shall be the one of peace. Here ends the reading. Now a reading from the Gospel of Luke, the second chapter. Joseph went with Mary to be registered, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Jesus is dressed like Solomon. We begin with a reading from the Wisdom of Solomon, the seventh chapter. I, Solomon, descendant of David, am the wisest king of Israel. I am also a mortal like everyone else. I am a descendant of the first of the children of the earth, and in the womb of my mother I was molded into flesh. When I was born, I began to breathe the common air, and I fell upon the common earth. My first sound was a cry, as is true of all. I was nursed with care and wrapped in swaddling clothes, for no king has had a different beginning of existence. There is, for all, one entrance into life, and one way out. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now a reading according to the Gospel of Luke, the second chapter. And Mary gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Jesus is the manger that Israel will not know. We begin with a reading from the prophet Isaiah, the first chapter. Hear, O heavens, and listen, O earth, for the Lord has spoken. I reared children and brought them up, but they have rebelled against me. The ox knows its owner, and the donkey its manger, but Israel, Israel does not know, and my people do not understand. Ah, sinful nation, people laden with iniquity, offspring who do evil, children who deal corruptly, who have forsaken the Lord, who despise the Holy One of Israel, who are utterly estranged. Here ends the reading. And a reading from the Gospel of Luke, the second chapter. And Mary laid him in a manger. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Jesus is not a stranger who needs an inn. We begin with the reading from the prophet Jeremiah, the 14th chapter. The word of the Lord that came to Jeremiah concerning the drought. Judah mourns, and her gates languish. They lie in gloom on the ground, and the cry of Jerusalem goes up. Her nobles send their servants for water. They come to the cisterns. They find no water. They return with their vessels empty. They are ashamed and dismayed and cover their heads because the ground is cracked. Because there is, has been no rain on the land, the farmers are dismayed. They cover their heads. Even the doe in the field forsakes her newborn fawn because there is no grass. The wild asses stand on the bare heights. They pant for air like jackals. Their eyes fail because there is no herbage. Although our iniquities testify against us, act, O Lord, for your name's sake. Our apostasies indeed are many, and we have sinned against you. O hope of Israel, its Savior in time of trouble, why should you be like a stranger in a land, like a traveler looking to stay at an inn for the night? Why should you be like someone confused, like a mighty warrior who cannot give help? Yet you, O Lord, are in the midst of us, and we are called by your name. Do not forsake us. The word of the Lord. And now a reading from the Gospel of Luke, the second chapter. And Mary gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the guest room. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Jesus' clothes and his manger are a sign of God's mercy. We begin with a reading from the Gospel according to Luke, the second chapter. In that region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were afraid with a great fear. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. For see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all people. To you is born today in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly army praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go to Bethlehem and see this word that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste, and they found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about the child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all of these words and preserved the memory of them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all that they had seen and heard as it had been told them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us confess our faith together with the Nicene Creed. I, we believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, 
God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And now let us pray together as God's people. Let us pray for this day and our celebration of the birth of Jesus. Gracious God, thank you for coming to us as the baby in the manger. Jesus is a sign of your delight in us. He is your gift of grace and love. Let the joy we feel today continue as we listen to his word in the rest of the year, that we will follow this child faithfully with our lives. Let us pray for the nations. Wonderful Counselor, bring your wisdom to the leaders of our world, that they will govern all people with the peace and justice of God. Bring down the tyrants, overpower evil, strengthen the good, bless those who seek to be a blessing to all. Let us pray for the Church. Heavenly Father, your Son gave us the gift of the Church. As you watched over and empowered his ministry, Watch over and empower the ministry of every church. Always remember us here at Grace. Make us light in the dark places of people's lives. Let us pray for God to be a healing presence with those who need him most. Mighty God, there are many who are in need tonight. Inspire us to reach out and minister as we are able. Guide and strengthen those who are working to care for the sick, the lonely, the dying, the homeless, the aged, the abused, and the hungry. On this day, bring them all your gifts of healing, comfort, and hope. Let us pray for all families. Father, bless all parents and children with strong and healthy relationships. As families gather in celebration of Jesus' birth, let there be joy and happiness. Where there has been pain, let there be the hope of moving on, or let there be healthy reconciliation and renewal. Let us pray for those who might be traveling. As you watched over and guided the Holy Family's travels, watch over and guide all those who travel this holiday. Give them good weather, infinite patience, and a safe journey. And let us pray for ourselves. All this we ask in the name of the child laid this day in a manger, our Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. And now we pray as our Savior taught us, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen. Let us go in peace to love and serve our Lord. Thanks be to God.